Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to quickly show you the products which I'm going to review in the next month or so. As you can see my desk is full with new items and of course if you have any questions about them feel free to ask them in the comment section down below and once I'm going to review the product I'm going to do my best to answer these questions. So let's start with the Ishim EV300D FEV goggles. These new goggles feature high resolution screens which matches the same resolution of the FetchUp HDO2 but unlike the HDO2, they are using LCD screens. Just like their previous version, the EV200D, they feature dual diversity receivers. In addition to adjusting their IPD between 56 to 72 mm, you'll be also able to adjust their focal length, so in case your subscription strength is between plus 3 to minus 8, you are very likely to be able to use these goggles without having to use diopters. In case you do need to use the opters, you'll be able to do it using these slots over here, which are not the same ones that were used on the EV200D and the FetchUck HD01. So in case you would like to make your own custom diopters, Ishin provides you with this diagram. These premium Ishin goggles come with a price tag of $320, so they are not cheap, but considering their list of specs and also the fact that they come with dual diversity receivers, this price is not very bad. Now by the way, probably due to shipping regulations, these goggles do not come with a battery and just like the HDO2 and also the newer versions of the FetchUck HDO, they come with a battery case, so in order to power them up, you will need to obtain two 18650 lithium ion batteries. Moving on to two new products by AJRC, the Ford 55A 4-in-1 ESC and the all new Zeus 35 all-in-1 flight controller. The Zeus 35 is a newer version of the Zeus F4 all-in-one flight controller. It features an F4 processor, a built-in 4-in-1 BLLES 35A ESC, and it supports between 3 to 6S LiPo batteries. This all-in-one flight controller weighs 9.7 grams, so it's 3.1 grams heavier than the previous version, which only supports 3S batteries and features a 15A 4-in-1 BLLES ESC. This is a very interesting and highly anticipated product and I'm looking forward to testing it out. The second product from AJRC is the Ford 55A BLLE32 4-in-1 ESC. It has a very premium touch and feel and comes with a price tag of $49, which is pretty good considering its specs. Moving on to this spinner from Flynova, which I'm actually not going to review and I bought it as a present for my brother. So you can see after turning it on, this LED is going to light up and we can give it a little spin and we can just toss it around. This is actually a pretty fun and also safe toy. So you can see after turning it on and spinning it, it's going to start walking. And if you're going to hold it like that, the rotor is going to stop spinning. Over here, you can find a micro USB port for charging its internal 100 mAh battery. It's going to take between 20 minutes to 30 minutes to fully charge it and once fully charged it will give you about 10 minutes of playtime. Moving on to two new products from Flywoo. The GOKO F7 20x20 mini stack is based on an F7 flight controller that features plenty of UARTs and a 40A BLA32 4-in-1 ESC. This is a pretty interesting stack that can support up to 6S LiPo batteries and soon I'm going to feature it in a build video when I'm going to build the Vampire 2 HD. The second product is the GOKO GN413S stack which is intended to be used on toothpick style quadcopters. It's based on an F4 flight controller which has a built-in 30A 4-in-1 ESC and a VTX that supports TRAM protocol and has a maximum output strength of 450mW. I intend to review this VTX separately and also feature this stack in a build video. In addition, using the Ishin Triangle D, the Skystars Kramam F4 all-in-one flight controller and the new Foxeer Preato Micro V4 camera which features a full case, I've started building a new micro quadcopter based on the Flexo C Ninja 3-inch frame. So in the build video, I'm going to go over the components, test the VTX and of course complete the build and take it for a test flight. As promised, once the weather is going to clear up, I'm going to compare the Hawkeye Firefly 4K Split Mini Camera, which by the way just got a new firmware update with the Cadix Tazier and the Runcam Hybrid 4K Split Cameras. I'm also going to build and fly the Ishin Taro 89, test the Avant Quad Kira, the 2S brother of the 
Vanta 2.5 inch racer, which I really like. Reviewed the new Q8 smart charger by ISDT. Compared the Vita FPV M01 all-in-one camera with the new C01 Pro camera, which is also being used by the Meteor 75 quadcopter, which I'm also going to review. I'm also going to test the Runcam Racer 3 micro-sized FPV camera, which has been optimized for LED screens. So in addition to comparing it with other micro-sized cameras, I also plan to include some inside goggles flight footage. In addition, I also plan to bench test this gold-plated 2306.6 2550 KV motor by Roto Riot, which I've previously featured in a build video when building the Ladrib Skyliner HD quadcopter. Fully review the PowerPlay FPV DVR by Immersion RC and compare it with the DVR of the Fetchuck HDO2 and the HDO. As requested by a couple of subscribers, I'm going to review this new 20x20mm VTX by Holybro. And also review the Transtech Beetle, which is probably one of the smallest quadcopters that you can get that come with a DJI Air Unit pre-assembled. I'm also testing a new 20x20 HD VTX, which is a result of a collaboration between Autotech and Cadix. As you may know, I've been testing their previous version, which I wasn't really impressed with, and hopefully this version is going to be much better. I'm also testing the new TBS Tango 2, which unfortunately I can't show you. I also upgraded the kit of the Ishii Novice 1, and now I'm using the Redlink T8S remote controller, and also the Ishin EW30 FE goggles, which I've been testing for the last couple of days, and from what I can tell you so far, these are probably the best goggles that you can get under $50. Finally, if I will have some extra time, I also plan to review the Dayton GTR 249 THD, which has been waiting impatiently for over a month, and now actually after going over the list of all these products, I actually pretty doubt that I'll be able to review it, but still, I hope to make it happen. So that's going to be it for this video. As you can see, everything is piled up over here and waiting to be reviewed. And by the way, I would like to thank RC Shim for giving me a shout out in his latest live stream and also congratulate him for getting to 30k subscribers. So if you are not familiar with his channel, which I really doubt, you can check it out in the link over here. As always, I would like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. Again, if you have any questions about any of the products that I showed you in this video, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. And once I'm going to review this product, I'm going to do my best to answer these questions. See you in my next videos, and goodbye.